Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Hamad Yusuf. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the Supreme Commander, visited the General Command of the BDF, where he was welcomed by the BDF Commander in Chief Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, the Minister of Defense Lieutenant General Abdullah bin Hassan Al Naimi, National Security Advisor and Commander of the Royal Guard Major General His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, Chief of Staff Lieutenant General Diab bin Sagar Al Naimi, and senior officers. His Majesty the King was accompanied during the royal visit, marking the closing of the celebrations by the BDF of the 53rd anniversary anniversary of its establishment by the personal representative of His Majesty the King, His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Hamad Al Khalifa. His Majesty praised the numerous and significant achievements and projects launched on the special occasion and lauded the efforts exerted by the BDF to celebrate the national anniversary. He also praised the BDF efforts in confronting the coronavirus as part of the national campaign to combat the global pandemic, as well as the noble contributions and readiness of medical services that include, included providing facilities equipped with the latest health supplies and preventive means through qualified and specialized medical personnel. During a briefing on plans to develop all BDF units, His Majesty the King expressed pride in the BDF staff and their constant readiness, stressing they are highly appreciated and a source of pride for Bahrain and its people. His Majesty wished the brave BDF staff further success in their various capacities in Bahrain and abroad and wished Bahrain continued progress and prosperity. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa chaired the weekly cabinet meeting remotely. The cabinet praised His Royal Highness's first wide-ranging briefing held with editors-in-chief of the kingdom's major news publications, which detailed the kingdom's citizens and led goals and aspirations led by His Majesty the King's vision. The cabinet extended its gratitude to the legislative authority, the private sector, civil society and Bahraini citizens for their continued support across policy agendas covered and the brief included Bahrain's economic prospects led by His Royal Highness. His Royal Highness underlined the importance of expediting government initiatives through committees, projects and plans implemented by the ministries with periodic evaluation of progress and achievements. The cabinet stressed the government's commitment to furthering cooperation between the executive and legislative authorities to ensure the kingdom's continued development. The cabinet then affirmed Bahrain's support to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, led by the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud, and the Crown Prince, His Royal Highness Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud, adding that the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia is the key strategic factor in furthering regional and global safety and stability, and is the primary stabilizing factor in the region and the global economy. In this regard, the cabinet reiterated the kingdom's firm support for Saudi Arabia's foreign ministry statement regarding the report submitted to the U.S. Congress. The cabinet then condemned the Houthi militia's launch of a ballistic missile towards the city of Riyadh and explosives towards the cities of Jaizan and Khamisam Sheikh. The cabinet affirmed that kingdom's solidarity with Saudi Arabia and all the measures it takes to confront these reckless terrorist attacks that deliberately target civilians and flagrant violations of international humanitarian law. The cabinet then discussed a number of memorandums during the meeting and outlined the following outcomes. First, the approval of the following memorandums. A memorandum of the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding an amendment of the law regulating the pharmaceutical profession and pharmaceutical centers. The amendment aimed to further regulate the dispensing of medical medicines containing narcotic drugs and psychotropic substances. A memorandum of the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs on the Amendment of the Narcotic Drugs and Psychotropic Substances Law. The amendment aims to tighten penalties and further increase measures to combat trafficking of these substances and contributing to increasing community protection. A memorandum of the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs on the addition of an article to the Penal Code that strengthened the legal protection of children. A memorandum of the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs on the ratification of the stat statue of the Arab Federation of Nature Reserves. A memorandum by the Minister of Foreign Affairs on the establishment of a general consulate of Bahrain and the Emirates of Dubai. The consulate aims to further strengthen relations between Bahrain and the UAE and to support the services provided to Bahraini citizens abroad. A memorandum by the Minister of Youth and Sports Affairs regarding the transfer of government financial support and subsidies that are provided to all private bodies working in the field of youth and sports to the Ministry of Youth and Sports Affairs. A memorandum of the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding the government's responses to five proposals and a draft law amendment submitted by the Council of Representatives. 
Second, the Cabinet reviewed the following topics. A memorandum by the Ministerial Committee for Development and Infrastructure Projects on the Committee's work for the year 2020. A memorandum submitted by the Minister of Interior on the Executive Summary of the Outcome of the Digital Transformation for the Sector of the Year of 2020. The summary showed an increase in saving service costs, a reduction in the time allocated for its implementation, and a contribution to improving the quality of services to, for citizens, residents and visitors. A memorandum by the Minister of Cabinet Affairs regarding the proposed procedures for requests from official delegations to visit the Kingdom of Bahrain. The Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, affirmed the importance of Future Generations Reserve Fund. He said that the government will refer new legislation to the legislative authority to increase the fund's share from the oil revenue in order to boost its balance and cover the new expenses that resulted from the pandemic. He praised the cooperation between the legislative and executive authorities and said that the new legislation will be presented in the coming months. The minister underlined the importance of supporting the fund as it helped in absorbing the effects of the pandemic and affirmed that the government is keen on investing its funds globally in order to ensure its sustainability in the service of the kingdom's progress and prosperity. He said that the fund had succeeded in sustaining itself in recent years by increasing its investment in currency markets, which reduced the risks of other financial investments during the pandemic. The Ministry of Housing signed the first contracts for the trial version of the government land rights development program in cooperation with the private sector. This program was launched by the Ministry as one of the main initiatives to involve real estate developments and contracting companies in implementing social housing projects for citizens who meet housing standards. The agreement was signed by the Minister of Housing, Engineer Basim Al Hamar, and Dr. Korean Fargus from the NAMAL Group in the presence of the Ministry's Under Secretary, Sheikh Khalid bin Hamoud Al Khalifa. The Minister of Housing stated that this program is part of the ministry's initiatives to involve the private sector in implementing social housing projects with the aim of implementing the royal order to build 40,000 housing units and the government plan in this regard which is considered one of its priorities headed by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. Dr. Kurian Fargus expressed pleasure with signing the agreement and hailed the program which allows the private sector to invest in providing social housing projects in the kingdom. Today, March the 1st, coincides with Gulf Cons Consumer Protection Day. This day aims to highlight the importance of consumer safety, strengthen the role of authorities in raising awareness, promote a culture of standardization among consumers, and develop legislation, regulations, and technical procedures that protect people from fraud and commercial misinformation. The Kingdom of Bahrain, represented by the Ministry of Industry, Commerce, and Tourism, has made large strides in this matter. For more information, we are joined on the phone by the Director of Consumer Protection at the Ministry of Industry, Commerce and Tourism, Ms. Fadila Al-Akram. Hello, Ms. Fadila. Tell us about the role of the Consumer Protection Directorate as part of the Ministry of Industry, Commerce and Tourism. Hello, good evening and thank you. It's my pleasure to be with you tonight. Uh, thank you very much. And I would like to express my many thanks to Bahrain TV. Uh, actually, the Consumer Protection Directorate at Ministry of Industry, Commerce and Tourism and the, kingdom, and the Kingdom of Bahrain has endeavored to consolidate the rights of consumer protection and define its duties over the past years by adopting a number of initiatives and ways to spread the awareness to consumers and educate them about their rights and duties, together with giving the guidance to the commercial sector about their legal duties towards consumers. Moreover, the Consumer Protection Directorate at the Ministry of Industry, Commerce and uh, Tourism, with the coordination with the Inspection Directorate at the Ministry, has started monitoring local markets and ensuring that they are free from unfair commercial practices and to regulate the relationship between the commercial sector and the consumer sector as well. The Directorate is responsible in licensing the promotional campaigns and sales in Bahraini market as well, while the main task of the Directorate is related to solving consumer complaints. What were the measures taken to protect consumers' rights, especially during the COVID-19 pandemic? 
uh, despite the exceptional circumstances during the year 2020, during the pandemic period, the Consumer Protection Directorate was able to contribute to solving 98% of the complaints received from consumers amicably, as the total number of complaints received reached to almost 5,000 complaints during the year 2020 compared to 3,400 complaints during the year 2019. The trend of complaints was basically related to the shopping online issues and the delivery of the uh, products to consumers. Director of Consumer Protection at the Ministry of Industry, Commerce and Tourism, Ms. Fadil Al-Akram, thank you for joining us. The Undersecretary of the Ministry of Health, Dr. Walid Al-Mana, announced that there will be an additional 300,000 vaccines in March. He added that this step comes in support of the national efforts under the framework of the National Vaccination Campaign. Dr. Al-Mana said that this move aims to ensure the health and safety of all in order to overcome the pandemic. He affirmed the importance of registering for the vaccine in order to support the national efforts to overcome the pandemic and ensure the safety of all. He praised the keenness of citizens to get the vaccine, which reflects the national responsibility and awareness of the Bahraini people. The national vaccination campaign continues to witness a wide turnout of citizens and residents. The Ministry of Health announced that 2,875 had taken the vaccine yesterday, bringing the total number of vaccinated individuals to 298,171. The ministry renewed its call for the community to commit to all precautionary measures and to take the initiative to register for the coronavirus vaccination. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of coronavirus cases reached 6,855 with 617 recoveries, 617 registered new cases and one death. 229 of the new registered cases are expatriates, 374 are contacts of active cases and 14 are travel related. The deceased was a 50-year-old male citizen. The Ministry expresses its heartfelt condolences to the family of the deceased and urges everyone to comply with the guidelines issued by the National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus.